Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra thin dress watches to solar powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT. Com. Hello and welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. My name is Adam and I am joined by my co-hosts Becca and Nicole. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, how is everyone doing today? Fantastic. Uh, yeah, pretty good. All good things so far. How about you? Good, good, yeah. I, Becca was out working her little butt off in the outdoors, and her face has now toned down to a normal flesh color. color. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. We're back to normal girl color. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, in today's episode, we are going to discuss that urge to possibly. What is the word I'm looking for? The splurge. urge to splurge. The, the urge, to splurge. urge to splurge. That sounds so dirty. <laughs> oh, basically, we want to talk about the journey maybe we've all had and also a lot of other people that have been public about that, about overbuying or overconsuming plants when you first fall in love with them and mm -hmm. kind of the journey that that leads you on. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode later mm -hmm. on after our catch-ups. Our 30-minute catch-up. Yes. How to recognize yes. it, how to make changes, and how to not make the same mistakes over and over again. Yes. Yep. A hundred percent. Okay. Well, who wants to who wants to catch us up on what they've been doing this past week? First, mm. nose goes. <laughs> oh, Nicole, it's up to you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you're on stage. <laughs> I'm on stage. Give me the mic. Okay. Well, this week I actually took off the next two weeks from work because it's me and Jay's nine year wedding anniversary this coming Sunday, which by the time you're listening to this, it would have already passed. It's July 17th. Um, and we were originally going to go somewhere, like take like a little mini trip, but things are so expensive right now. You guys, I know I've talked about this before, but airfare is insane and mm. gas prices haven't gone down much. So, you know, we just decided to hold off and to wait. So I have this time off of work and I've kind of just been doing like different things each day. I got really caught up with editing the past few days. I was helping my mom and Ted in the garden this morning. I filmed a video. Yay. Because I didn't film one last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we uh, she's she's taken out some bushes that are just not doing well. We have japanese beetles and we've come to the we've come to the conclusion they're that listen back. yes <laughs> they're back they're gonna continue to come back because no matter what we do as a preventative measure like laying grub x so that they die off in their younger stages of life if the neighbors aren't doing shit about it and they have japanese beetles they're yeah. just gonna migrate and they're gonna find our roses and they're gonna mutilate them so we're taking out a few bushes and um, she wants to like do something else over there, like maybe do like some potted plants or like maybe turn it into like a little nook, like a little reading nook. I want to get like an egg chair, oh, mm -hmm. the egg chairs, the swinging egg chairs during. Amazing. They're so expensive yeah. though. Oh yeah. Like why? <laughs> why? They are. Because it's in the shape of an egg. I don't know. But. <laughs> I have I have to say your backyard 
has always been like a little oasis. Even when you guys first moved in, I was like, mm-hmm. this is so cozy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, every time you... you post about it on Instagram, I'm just like, honestly, goals. <laughs> it's like, a vibe. I just want to touch. I want to touch the grass with my feet. Yeah. Yeah. It is a great yard. It's a great yard. You know, even with that child jungle gym in the center of it, yeah. <laughs> it's still definitely you know, a vibe. And you guys, you know both... what I'm tired of? I'm really tired of you posting shit that's just sponsored posts all the time. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Listen, we'll leave a link to my jungle gym in the notes of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is an inside joke that I'm not in on. Um, I'm like oh, standing well, here like po- smiling like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I posted about something. I can't remember what I posted Tiki about. Tiki Torches. Tiki Those torches. LED tiki torches, which Those I LED... have the same ones, and I absolutely love them. Yeah, the LED tiki torches in my backyard. If you don't know about them, listen, DM me, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you an affiliate link. But someone, I was talking about them one day, and someone literally DM me and was like, "Why do you? All you ever do is talk about sponsored posts or sponsored <laughs> product or something. It must be nice that people send you all this stuff." And I was like, "No one For fucking free, sent me yeah. these tiki torches. <laughs> oh my I bought them. <laughs> yeah, so That's I was mean. aggravated. But Adam picked up on that story, and we had a little conversation about it. Anyway." Yeah. Um. Oh so hashtag not sponsored. My yard is a total vibe, and I love it. <laughs> but like, it's a lot of maintenance. Like, you guys have have spent the night week at my house before, so like, you guys see all of you saw all of like the bushes in it, and like mm-hmm. the grass upkeep. We have landscapers that come, but like some of the trimming and pruning of all these things like my mom just can't do it all herself and like i work and i try to help and it's just a lot of weeds anyway long story Mm -hmm. short we're trying to like minimize the work that we have to do back there and some of the plants just weren't growing that great or they we didn't find them like aesthetically pleasing so we're getting rid of a few of them sorry hey hey stop it Go to bed. Oh, at first I, w- I was like, is Leo sick? Because his voice sounds really deep. <laughs> no. <laughs> My dogs are down here. Hey, put it out. Sorry, I was trying not to yell. Um, yeah, so that's what we did this morning. So like my cheeks were very rosy too because we were literally pulling bushes out of the ground mm-hmm. and uh, it was like full sun and I was like, I cannot, you know, mm-hmm. but anyway, so that's pretty much what I've been doing. Like I've just been kind of doing something different every day. Last night was probably the highlight of my week so far because Jay and I went to dinner and we don't often go out to dinner. And you look and so dressed- cute. I dressed up. I bought a dress. I was such a cute little girly girly last night. <laughs> Wait, nice. did I miss? Did I miss that post? You well, did. Well, I didn't you show. Have. I didn't show my like whole dress, but it was just a selfie we took outside of the restaurant. As Adam's oh. searching my Instagram, I'm going through your stories. Right. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? Is you tagged me in something after that, and it automatically like doesn't let me. It says that like oh. I haven't viewed things past the tag. Oh. Sorry. Okay, continue. You That's did okay. look cute. Thank you. Both of you. Thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> um we went to Fogo de Chão. I'm probably saying that wrong. I always called it Fogo de Chão, but it, that's not what it's called. It's a Brazilian steakhouse. And I ate so much, so <laughs> much. Did you get the meat sweats? I did. Probably. <laughs> gross. That is so gross. <laughs> after we were done eating he's like you want to see a dessert menu don't you and i was like are you fucking judging me because yes i do <laughs> <laughs> so he got like cheesecake and i got ice cream eight dollars for two scoops of vanilla ice cream and it was like the best ice cream i've ever had <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> worth it worth it but man you guys things are so expensive i was when i got that bill i was just like holy shit we didn't have not one drink we drank ice water the whole damn night and it was still over two hundred dollars and i almost oh. shit my pants like i knew it was gonna be that <laughs> yeah but it's I'm a just special like, occasion yeah yeah mm-hmm. but i was just like why is stuff is so fucking expensive anyways cheaper than a vacation so we're saving our money to hopefully go to spain next year i really want to go to spain yeah yeah for our tenure i'm saying this out loud 
so I can hold myself accountable to plan that trip because <laughs> I need to plan yes. that trip. So yeah, we just decided to save this year and just put it away for next year. So yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's pretty much it. I think next week maybe we'll just do like some little stuff like, I don't know. Oh, I do have one more story I need to talk about because I talked about this in my <laughs> stories. So I went on a bike ride a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I need to hear the story here because I saw your post <laughs> yeah, and I same. was like, mm, what happened? <laughs> oh. I actually was like, I'm not going to ask her about it because I know she's going to talk about it on the pod. Like, we're, <laughs> we'll get the story. We'll get the story. <laughs> this is old news by now, but a few days ago from recording this episode, I went on a bike ride with Jay and it was like this spontaneous late night bike ride. And we have really pretty trails by our house. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to laugh. People falling off things makes me laugh, and I'm just like picturing it. So. Oh, I, I'm, I, it's hilarious in my head. Like I would have loved to have been somebody else watching that happen, because it had to have been the funniest shit ever. But anyway, so I am. We're riding on on this trail, and our trails around our house are really pretty, and they're very like, they're very like easy to ride. Like not really a lot of uphill, not very bumpy. So we're riding the bike and my back brake on my bike, it's actually my mom's bike. It doesn't work that well. Like it needs to be fixed. So like when you're riding pretty quickly or you pick up speed going downhill, you're supposed to kind of pump your back brake. <laughs> you don't want to pump your front brake <laughs> because no. for people that don't know about riding bikes, if the front brake brake works really well, which it does, you're going to go flying over the bike if you stop too fast. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, we're co we're coming around like a curve and it's pretty open space and we see uh like an older lady walking, she's like power walking, she's got her AirPods doing her thing. And then we see like a flock of of geese like off to the side oh, no. and like geese are aggressive in general, Very. so like you have to be careful. <laughs> and they're like mm -hmm. some are on the road where the bikes are, like where the path is, I mean, and then some are like over by this pond of like water. And we're coming around and Jay just Jay's in front of me and he turns around. And he's just like, hey, slow down because I'm going to go slow around these geese. I don't know why in my head that meant sped up, speed up. But like <laughs> I <laughs> I didn't realize it was a little bit of a decline going around the hill and I didn't pump the brake like I should have. And I before I realized that I was too close to his back tire and I was envisioning this lady and me hitting this lady i was envisioning the geese attacking me and i was envisioning envisioning like hitting jay and him going flying off the bike so what do i do i just slam on my front brake and i go flying over the handlebars <laughs> oh, no. what it was but it happened in slow motion because i wasn't going super fast i like went <laughs> <laughs> tuck and roll granny <laughs> I slammed on the brakes and I like was like no like it happened in slow motion in my head <laughs> and I went over the bars and like off to the left side I fell right in front of this lady she was maybe 10 <laughs> feet in front of me and she just stops and like I like I'm on the ground at this point and I'm just like please don't let anything be broken like because I could <laughs> I could feel the heat of the pavement because I scraped my arm, I scraped my leg, oh. and I was just like, just please don't oh, let anything rash. be broken. And we were already 40, like 40 minutes from the house at this point. So I was like, if this bike is broken, I'm going to have to swallow my pride and like call Ted to come pick us up because I can't walk back this whole this whole trail, you know? Yeah. And the lady just, I get up and I'm like, look at the lady and Jay's... <laughs> Jake's like 20 feet ahead and he's looking like what the fuck happened just now <laughs> and the lady just passes me and she's like I'm sorry and she just keeps walking like she doesn't ask me if I need any help she doesn't oh she doesn't gosh. ask me if I'm okay she's just like I am sorry and she just keeps walking and I'm like yeah you're saying that because like I just killed my pride in front of you right now like I just grown ass woman <laughs> fell off of a bike that is but the most like, city interaction ever. Like city suburbs. Yeah. Like yeah. Just let it happen and move on. 
yeah yeah like get up girl you're good you know it's probably what she was thinking yeah <laughs> but jay yeah. jay felt bad too because he's like are you all right and i was like i'm fine i just don't know about the bike like nothing's broken i'm walking so we're good you know yeah but it's it's crazy to fall as an adult and this is what i was talking about on my instagram page because like falling as a grown-ass adult not only makes you feel like a child for one like but there was nobody else on that trail the whole time we were riding like why did there have to be a person there at that moment you know so it's so embarrassing and then it's like you hurt yourself like i woke up the next day feeling like i got hit by a bus yeah <laughs> yeah you Oof. know and like you forget how to fall you forget how to fall as an adult like my niece was over on the fourth of july and she was racing with jay and her feet got up under her and she hit the pavement and she scraped her knees her elbows her hands all cut up and she's Ugh. not she like she cries for two seconds and then she's like yeah it's really bad mom and i'm like oh my god this girl is mangled and she's like <laughs> doesn't even care you know uh, but like this like i have like a bruise i have a bruise on my arm see that oh yeah yeah that's, that's a like dark the, one that's like the handlebar yeah anyway i'm mm. fine it could have been a lot worse i didn't break anything i didn't spray anything and i made it back home and the bike is fine so <laughs> there you go it was just all you can it ask was for traumatic. It was traumatic go get that <laughs> Go get that back brake fixed. Yeah, I know. I have to before we go out again, for sure. I love that you guys... Yeah. I mean, besides falling, I love that you guys were out doing that together. That's really sweet that you guys, like, mm-hmm. spend time together doing that. Like, I don't know. I like that. <laughs> yeah. He's a very, like, kind of... act. Like, he likes being active. Like, he's looking into getting some rollerblades, and I'm, I'm just very lazy. Like, I don't... <laughs> I used to rollerblade... And I like I like going on walks, but I don't want to go too far because if I go too far and I like overexert myself, like I don't like that. Like that's not fun for me. That's ex- that's exercise, yeah. and I don't like exercising. But um, <laughs> I like I like riding a bike. Like I love riding a bike. Yeah, riding so. bikes is it's like low impact and fun and yeah, easy. Yeah, and like the amount of plants we saw on that trail, like the next time we go out i'm gonna be like sorry babe but we're gonna have to make multiple stops because i want to take pictures of everything like i saw ferns growing off like out of this river stream it was so pretty Mm. i just i like i want to take like pictures of everything but yeah yeah it was fun it was fun till i fell and i get over it (laughs) (laughs) and then of course i buy this dress and trying to look cute and i have a big ass bruise on my knee my arms i look like i look like you know i got beat up but all good i'm fine Mm -hmm. yeah she's (laughs) tough i'm tough look like a tough anyway (laughs) that was a very long update for me wow i was talking for a long time no i enjoyed every second (laughs) me too (laughs) so how about you guys who wants to go next how's your weeks doing I haven't really been doing much this week, but I did, although it's going to be old news now, but I did film a video and and release it. I actually filmed it twice because the first time I filmed it, I went back and watched the footage and I was annoyed with how much I used my hands and also (laughs) how many times I said, this plant's growing really well. Like literally every single one of them. You know, sometimes (laughs) I really struggle with adjectives when i am filming a yeah. collection type video yeah. and i'm just like say the same thing over and over and i'm just like that's I easy to this. do though that's so easy to do because they're all growing well so you want to say that you know <laughs> yeah they're growing well they're i've been good. saying it anyway like in my videos like i'll fixate on a phrase so lately it's anyway and then all this to say I had to edit. I, I said it at least 20 <laughs> times in a video that I edited yesterday. And I'm like, Becky, say it once. <laughs> <laughs> say it once. Yeah, I fixate on phrases, too. Maybe this is our neurodivergent brains because I yeah. said multiple times, time will tell. Time will tell. <laughs> time will tell. And I'm like, why the hell am I saying that? Like, I literally never <laughs> use that phrase. Yeah. And it was because I was like, you know, I want to see what these leaves look like when it gets mature. Time will tell. I want to see these blooms <laughs> look like. Time will tell. And I'm just like, God, they hate me. Just fixated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you find us doing that when you edit the podcast? Do you ever have to edit? No. Really? No. 
I just take out dead spaces and sometimes, you know, are off the record conversations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Knock those but to the Patreon. I do, I do get really annoyed with myself and how many times I say like when mm. I like, mm. and now I'm going to do it all the time. Yeah. Um, and I don't notice it with either of you two, just myself. And I, mm-hmm. I'm just like, ah. Mm. <laughs> but. I feel yeah. I feel you on that. Ugh, yeah. But yeah, it, outside it. Great oh, video. Sorry, it was oh, a great thank video. You. Very informative. I do like I my found out I have. I found out I have a Lachnosa snow caps. Yeah. Like I didn't know has, that. Has yours bloomed yet? No. Mm-mm. Oh, well, you suck at life. I Never know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, other than that, I haven't really been doing much. Um, I went and bought some copious amounts of Little Debbie ice cream because I just found out about it. I saw mm-hmm. that. You guys, like, I didn't know all about of this. The li- all of the Little Debbie snacks like have an ice cream. I haven't tried them yet, but like Nutty Bars, Star mm. Crunch, Oatmeal Cream Pie. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Where did you get those? What store? Walmart. Wal- Walmart. They were at Walmart. Yeah. Okay. I shouldn't have asked that because I have a Walmart right down the block. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, pretty chill here. We did have a very big dust storm and then a thunderstorm last night. And honestly, yeah. like my little heart was so happy because yeah. I was just like, he- it poured and just like hearing the rain again and seeing lightning. Oh, and that's so I'm- fun. In the Midwest, I was terrified of storms because of tornadoes, you know, Mm -hmm. like I absolutely hated them. But here, I know there's not going to be tornadoes, so I can Mm -hmm. appreciate them for like their beauty and grandeur, you know? Yeah. 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 You were in the tornado belt when you were down here. Yeah. You were down there. That open land. Oof. (laughs) That open land. That wide open land. (laughs) God's belt. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's been my week becca let's hear how your week's been oh okay so i have four children this week and mm. it's oh gosh it, okay so actually let me explain what that means <laughs> you look great for having four kids yeah you wow. look great thank you <laughs> i gotta get yeah, you some gifts absolutely glowing <laughs> yeah thanks they're uh you know 12 through 13 so (laughs) um yeah so daniel's nephews i guess my nephews as well they're here in town for the week and they're just like you know kids they just had need things to do during the summer so they're kind of being passed around to like different family members and um they're with us this week and it's been fun like it's it's fun having like kid energy in the in a room like i just so miss kid energy like that was like the best part of being a teacher was just like the funny things they said and like their little personalities and like they're all in the age range that I really like like um 12 to 14 ish I just think that's such a fun age um Mm -hmm. so anyway yeah we're just hanging out we're doing house chores we're like trimming up the trees and you guys know our sewer lagoon yes (laughs) the the poo lagoon the poo lagoon (laughs) If anybody's just tuning in, um, Missouri does this thing usually, like, if you have, like, property where the, your sewer system just goes out to, like, a pond, like, a small pond, like, for like far away from your house. And so it just, I guess, naturally composts back into the earth. I don't really know how it works. Anyway, so Missouri, everything grows here, specifically where I live. Like, it is, like, the optimal environment for, like, everything to grow. And so... When we bought the house, it was, like, overgrown. There was, like, a forest around this thing. and It's heavily fertilized. <laughs> yes. Yes. And to be to code... Actually, yeah, that is probably why things grow so fast around it. Um, yeah. But to be to code things... Luscious. Yeah. <laughs> and it's stinky. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, to be to code, it has to be cleared, like, I don't know, 10, 12 feet, like, perimeter around the lagoon and it was not that there was trees that looked like they had been there for like 10 years around this lagoon when we moved in so anyway you know they had to clear it out before we could buy the house um, for our lender to approve of it but 
now it's just like a lot of brush growing up around it and there were some trees just from like two years there was like some elm trees that were like taller than me and I'm like this is insane so anyway we were out there doing that that's like one of the big things we did and we're working on the greenhouse like cutting wood and I think we're gonna be able to like finish the roof finally and um like put on the siding like I don't know I just I'm over the greenhouse like there's just nothing exciting really happening like I feel like it's taking so long that it's no longer exciting to me or anybody else that follows me like you know like here's my thing (sighs) I feel like now's the time you're working on the greenhouse yeah but when spring comes it's gonna be like time to fill the greenhouse you know and I feel like that's when you're going to get the most enjoyment out of it because Mm -hmm. you have to give yourself grace because it's only you guys, you know, like it's such a lot of work. Like you had a little bit of help in the beginning, but yeah, it's so much work and Daniel works full time, you know? So really it's like you, (laughs) you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been quite the process. I don't know. I feel like I don't understand. It kind of upsets me when people get things done, like, really, really fast. Because I'm like, that's not realistic. You know? Like, I get it. Like, people probably are able to do it, like, full time. And so that's why it gets done so fast. But then you have, like, average people like myself who are like, oh, I'm going to build a greenhouse in a month or in, like, a weekend, two weekends. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be done in, like, two weekends. And that's just not real at all like especially when you're making content about it like there's this couple that i follow on tiktok and they are amazing like i don't know how they get the amount of shit they do done like in the last year i've been following them they built an entire garden like mine they built a greenhouse they built a tiny house in the woods like it's a it's a tree house um they refit they redid their pool they redid their deck that's like five big projects that Mm -hmm. like people do one of those a year and they've done all of them in one year i'm like this is insane these people are wild but it's their full-time thing and they're both doing it yeah i'm just like i don't have that kind of stamina to do that all day and like literally this is like a zero hate towards them it's admiration really if anything because i'm like so like how do people do stuff like that anyway so yeah, with the kids here, it's it's nice just to have more hands to do, like, stuff that takes forever and, like, isn't that fun, like, pulling weeds and clearing mm-hmm. brush and stuff like that. Like, the garden was full of weeds, and it has taken me, like, all summer to get to the point where I was, and there was still so many, and we spent 45 minutes out there, and it's pristine, not a single weed. Wow. Look Yay. at that. that 45 feels good, minutes. I bet. Yeah, I was saying, like, I understand why farmers have like nine kids because that's a lot of hands. Nine kids, no TV. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I get it. I I truly get it. But um, anyway, so it's been fun just having them around and like getting stuff done. And uh, last night we played a board game. Like we've been playing lots of board games and just I don't know. It's just something different to like break up life right now. Yeah, um, I think that that's really cute. That like you have family that with kids that are like going to other families houses like that your families are that big that you could do that Mm -hmm. like I never did that as a kid and I think that I think that brings a lot of value to to kids that age too because they can kind of see different family dynamics and they can learn a lot from staying with multiple families you know totally yeah I think it's great I definitely want to do that with my kids um like Mm -hmm. have them go stay with people I I stayed with my grandparents for like a week or two every summer and it was like my favorite week every year Mm -hmm. like it was so much fun just to hang out with them and like it's like a little vacation kind of yeah Yeah. you get to just hang out and like live life the way they do I don't know I agree it's really good I think it's good for them yeah but yeah and they learn some fun skills but that's basically been my week I don't really have anything else to update on besides that like I've just been editing and videos and just regular work on top of all of that but yeah are the kids like super impressed that you're a youtuber because i find like kids that age like i think it's so cool Mm -hmm. yeah they are like okay kids this age like they don't they're like they low-key don't want you to think they don't want you to know what they think is cool kind of so like yeah actually it's interesting because to them 
the fact that I'm a YouTuber, it doesn't seem like a big deal because this is like a normal career for someone yeah. at this point. Like, you know what I mean? Like at their age, this career has existed throughout their entire life. So it's not right. like a weird like, oh, like how is that possible that you actually make money off of that? Like, mm-hmm. like they don't even I mean, also they're kids, so they're not really thinking about that. But like I'm trying to understand like. Like, one of them was like, oh, yeah, you're almost to 100,000, so, like, you'll get your bronze play button. And I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> like, I didn't even know what color it would be. <laughs> like, it's just interesting. Like, to them, it's just, like, another job. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So, I don't know if they're necessarily impressed. I just think they're like, yeah, it's her job. I don't know. It's weird. Mm-hmm. It is. That is strange, you know? Yeah. I feel like my parents are more impressed than my kids are impressed. Yeah. You know, because they're like, you could make money off of that, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. hey, it's not just that. It's a lot of work for one. But yeah, yeah, I think it took us moving in together for them to realize like everything that goes in- into a video and the yeah. time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the sponsorship. <laughs> you have the time. Yeah. I don't have very many sponsors this month, so I'm a little stressed out financially because that is my main source of income. I'm like, oh, great. Um, what else mm. can I do to like make up for that? So, you know, just do as you a... find it slower, like not to get off topic, but do you find mm. it slower now? Because I feel like I had a lot of people reaching out at the beginning of the year. But like Mm -hmm. once summer hit, it kind of died down. And then I had that sponsor back out of the contract that I told you about not that long ago. Is that how it's kind of been for you? I've had maybe like three sponsors back out late, like in the last couple months. And I think it really is because of like the economy right now. Like they're having to Mm -hmm. allocate their money for, you know, like probably the payroll or whatever. Like they're needing to like prioritize money internally first. Mm -hmm. Because marketing is usually the first budget to get cut, you know, because it's like not as important as paying people, their employees. Right. So I have had probably three back out, um, which like really stinks. But I obviously I get it, um, which Mm -hmm. is it just sucks. But I think it has a lot to do with the current economy. And also Mm -hmm. there's no like holiday where people are buying things in the summer. True. You know, like the holidays like any like october through march i feel like are pretty um pretty big busy for people buying stuff but in the middle i don't know maybe people are just like chilling out yeah i don't know but yeah like they're unless you're a travel vlogger then you're probably doing a lot yeah yeah Yeah, i think it comes in waves for sure and like some months i have like eight sponsors and this month i have three and i'm like can we do anything Mm. else like uh." (laughs) but yeah i mean i'd rather like i had one come to me that i just wasn't really into and i said no like even though it's money like i'm still not going to take it just because it's money like i still want to hold like in my integrity at speaking about like sponsored things earlier with you nicole like I don't yeah. know. If I'm going to put my name on something, as I, I want it to be something that I would actually use or at least be interested in. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. And, like, and I, you have to, you come to a point where you're, you're reaching such a huge audience that you want to make sure that you're not sending people in the wrong direction, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's kind of business update, personal update yeah all right well let's let's dive into our topic this Mm -hmm. overconsumption yeah honestly i feel like it's a sentiment we hear from a lot of people and even just people that i follow on instagram like i see Mm -hmm. story posts about them just being really stressed with their collection Mm -hmm. and uh, like a, a lot of people you know a lot of people came into plants in the pandemic when we were all home and we were all like looking for a, an escape. And now some of us have to go back to how our lives were before where we're not home 24 mm-hmm. seven. Mm-hmm. And then this hobby, this something that brought joy can also spiral you into like anxiety, depression or shame, I guess. Cause I felt yeah. shame about killing a plant before. Have you guys? Oh yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, especially if I've talked yeah. about it online. <laughs> yeah. And people yeah. will remember it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is they're like, where does this plant? It's like, please just stop. Like, yeah. don't. 
<laughs> Don't ask <Yeah>. a question. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So when you've both started collecting plants, did you feel this urge to like, I don't know if I would even call over consume, but that's definitely what it was. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Because in my mind at that time, I was just like, oh, I just want to try all these different plants. I just love plants. I love plants. Like, did mm-hmm. you guys both do the same exact thing? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I was watching a lot of YouTube. I had my favorite YouTubers, YouTube being two of them. And like I <laughs> saw other people's collections and not that like I was influenced to buy that plant, but I guess that's what it would be. Like I didn't go out and buy that plant just because somebody else had it. But like I wanted to test out like my skill with the plant or like to see mm-hmm. if I could keep it alive. But I feel like every time I went to a store like searching for a specific plant I would end up purchasing so many other plants so like every time I was shopping I was coming home with like at least five house plants and it Mm -hmm. just things accumulate so fast that way and when you're buying more house plants you're purchasing more supplies obviously you're purchasing pots to go with those plants to repot and it just becomes a huge expense so Mm -hmm. I think that that's like where the overconsuming started for me and just being curious mainly like if I can grow these plants in my conditions in my home. Yeah, I think it was the same for me more or less like I would see plants that I saw online in person and I'd be so excited that I f- found it. Like for me it was like the thrill of the chase. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that chase would be punctuated with coming home with the plant to like I found it like it for me it felt like a treasure hunt kind of so Mm -hmm. I really loved doing that especially because Tucson didn't have a great plant selection when I first started it was like really not it so yeah yeah, there was definitely a long phase where I was just like consuming plants without really much thought about how they were going to work long term and um not really thinking about the fact that these plants are going to grow and get bigger and like not be small enough to fit on my windowsill anymore. That was a big thing for me because like I had only a few places where I could put plants because I had lived with other people besides like a partner. And, you know, after a while, all those spots got filled up and I just, I don't know, wanted to create new spots, like make it work, like shoved as many as I could in that spot And it just made for a very cluttered environment in my head and in my space. And I'm not a person who likes clutter. And Mm -hmm. I started noticing I was doing that with my plants, like kind of abandoning myself in a way. You know what I mean? Like that's a little dramatic, but kind of abandoning my typical desires for my spaces just so that I could have more plants. Mm. Yeah. And I think like adding on the fact that we all kind of, we all fell in love with plants, but then we started youtube channels and we all started around the same time and we all liked plants before the youtube channels but then it was like when you have to create content on top of it like i feel like that added another layer of just like Mm -hmm. unboxings do really well so you ordered plants or you know Mm -hmm. all of that stuff Mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point because like with ordering plants online too and not just going to like a brick and mortar store you don't want to just purchase one plant online and then pay for the shipping and the taxes like you're like oh let me just add a few more plants to my cart to make it like the Mm -hmm. shipping justifiable you know right right and that adds up to especially if you're ordering from overseas like that you know you want to put as many in your cart as possible because of that phytosanitary certificate you're purchasing and then Mm -hmm. the shipping cost you know and that is a really good point becca that you said about like not expecting things to grow because i would say when i kind of shifted my collection to Hoya I was buying a lot of cuttings and they're all I all of my Hoya mostly all of my Hoya started out as two leaf cuttings Mm -hmm. two or four leaf cuttings like nothing was bigger than that they were solely just like very small plants and I'm happy that they've all grown but the transition of being like okay I have them all in these areas and then as they're getting bigger and bigger like I was Mm -hmm. like what the hell am I gonna do like where am Mm -hmm. I gonna put these yeah um And that's something that I feel like when you're in the thick of it, you don't think about. Like, you don't think, 
about, well, maybe like in a six months down the road, this is going to be a bigger plant. Because I see people, and it's no shame to them, but I see people mm-hmm. that have these IKEA greenhouse cabinets and they just fill them with Hoya. But they're mm-hmm. all small because that's how yeah. Hoya are, but they're going to grow. <laughs> they're going to really grow fast. Out of that greenhouse cabinet. Yeah. Especially yeah. in that environment. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, what are some other things you guys think kind of uh, facilitate that overconsumption? You know, because like me personally, I love buying new gadgets like tech gear. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and there is so there is like chemical chemical dopamine releases when you like do something like that. Yeah, and I definitely got that with plants. Did you guys mm-hmm. feel that way too? I think. Um... There's an episode of Bloom and Grow Radio about it's like it's called Your Brain on Plants or something like that. Like when we buy plants, Ugh, I'm trying to brighten my phone, but it's like keeps opening up my notifications. Okay, <laughs> it's like Your Brain on Plants or something. And um, Maria interviewed a doctor, and it's it's like an addiction. Like it really is. It becomes an addiction to purchase things Mm -hmm. and i I said a few days ago or i said yesterday on my stories that i think that shopping addictions get masked a lot by buying house plants like people might not i don't know like that shopping addiction might not come out in other parts of their life or maybe it has but it was always like quote-unquote unhealthy things so it was easier to recognize but then when Mm -hmm. it's a plant it's like harder to detect because it's like a good a quote unquote good thing like these things make our home feel better um Mm -hmm. it's like buying a lot of vitamins it's like well vitamins are good for me like i should be taking these but eh, not 800 eh. a day how's your poop like (laughs) (laughs) what color is it that is the thing though because you know you're right the house plants are something that you can care for it's not just like it's not like a shopping addiction where you're just buying like designer handbags that you just have like hordes of them mm-hmm. sitting. Mm-hmm. But like plants are viewed differently because, yeah, they're sitting, but you're actively doing something with it yeah. and they're growing, hopefully. Yeah. But it's all in the same. It's like all in the same you know, yeah. spectrum. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. like admirable to keep a plant alive. So people will like praise you for it. You know, yeah. it's. Mm. It's definitely, it is definitely kind of like a catch 22 to look at it and be like, you look at a hundred plants on shelves and be like, oh my gosh, your collection is so beautiful. But then also like, look at that and be like, you're a hoarder, like you're hoarding plants, you know? No, really? Yeah. And it's, it's, it is, it's kind of, oh no, it's kind of like self-reflection a little bit you know because I mean there was a time where I had almost 200 house plants and I know a lot of us have Mm -hmm. hundreds of house plants and we keep them beautiful like our collections are beautiful but um yeah I don't know it's a fine line you know but like you said Adam like we are caring for them like we're propagating them we're we're watering them we're changing the soil we're cleaning our shelves hopefully clean your Mm -hmm. leaves people (laughs) um but then like (laughs) <laughs> hashtag my clean leaves <laughs> <laughs> on brand <Selfless> plug <laughs> but then like you know i think that the biggest thing for me when i realize maybe i need to start being content with the plants that i have and almost you know to the point of downsizing a little bit was when i realized the expense of the upkeep of having all those plants i think when you first yeah. get into collecting quote unquote or you know over consuming and and all these plants bring you joy you you hit a a wall where you're like okay now i need to buy grow lights now i need to buy soil Mm -hmm. now i need to buy these soil amendments unless i'm using daily tanks which you should because then you don't have to buy any amendments um (laughs) you know just like all of the things that you need to maintain your collection you know bigger pots once you need to up pot and it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot to keep up with and i think i went from over consuming to just kind of like for the past I, I'd say since COVID probably because we weren't really going out shopping during that time um just kind of like learning to be content with my plants and then even trading plants with other people I think is mm-hmm. is a healthier way to go about obtaining plants you know yes 
Yeah. Absolutely. Becca, is there like some points in your collecting journey where you were like noticed that you were like, I need to, I need to like slim down or I need to get yeah. rid of some things? I, I think um, it, it happens more often than I would think than because it like, I don't know, I've been able to recognize it quicker, so I notice it more often if I'm in a place where I have too many for my mental my mental health at that moment or just like the capacity of my home. Like I have a place for every plant. I have special slots in my home. And I think this is really important uh just to like help you not go to the plant store all the time and come home with something every time, but like I have literally just like slots and like pockets in my home where I'll put plants. But if I notice that all of the slots are filled and they start ending up on the floor, that's how I know I have too many plants. Mm-hmm. Um, and that happens maybe, and it's not even that I um, am buying plants all the time, but sometimes a plant will get propagated and then I have to pot it up. And then that's another plant in my collection, right? So that's going to mm-hmm. take up a slot. So that kind of stuff happens for me all the time or I'll up pot a plant and it's in a bigger pot so it can't go in that slot anymore so it needs to go in this slot and now I have a you know what I mean so that's how I look at my collection is open spaces um and yeah if if plants end up on the floor more often than not that's how I know and I need to either rearrange or get rid of some and sometimes I just end up throwing them away or I don't know, but I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but sometimes when it comes to a point where like I'm done with the plant, it looks so bad that I would even, I would feel bad giving this to somebody else. Yep. Like, 100%. Yeah. To me, it's not worth <laughs> I don't want to pass off this burden. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, and like people will comment and be like, oh, I would totally buy that. But I'm like, should you though? Like, yeah. should you? Is this a responsible plant purchase? Like, you know, this plant is doing really bad. It's just going to, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, I would, because, I, for example, I have this plant. It's an Ace of Spades. Ace of Spade Anthurium might be, like, a middle grade Anthurium. They're not, like, a $10 plant. You know what I mean? But it's maybe, like, a yeah. $50 plant, for example. Mm-hmm. But I have one, and to me, it's worth, like, five bucks. Yeah. But, like, I it was sent to me for a video, so, like, I didn't pay for it. But if I did pay for it, I would want to sell it for at least what I paid for it. And like in that yeah. in that case, why would I charge someone fifty dollars for this plant that is doing terrible? So that's the dynamic that yeah. I have going on in my head. Like if I'm trying to get rid of something, I'm like, why would I charge somebody that much if this plant is not worth that? But I'm I paid that, mm-hmm. so I want my money back. But at the same time, you know what I mean? Like when a plant loses value, it yeah. depreciates. <laughs> yeah. 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 True. Um, because I don't think like plants are like cars, like they don't depreciate as soon as you bring them home. They should appreciate. In, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Unless you were a pink princess in 2020, <laughs> you oh, depreciated. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's a that's a dilemma that I run into all the time, and that's why I end up holding on to plants for longer than I should. There, I can think of at least three plants in my collection that are in that exact situation. Yeah, yeah that's I have a, good... a sh- oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say I'm sure that we probably all have this, but I have a shelf in my bedroom. <laughs> That used to have like beautiful plants on it and still does, but there are like three plants on there that are just full on dead. I have not even tried Mm -hmm. to take care of them. They are wilted AF and I, they're still there. Like I literally haven't done anything to them. They're just still sitting there dead and I can see them just like dead as fuck. (laughs) And I'm just like, whatever. Every time you wake up. Yeah, and I'm just like, maybe I should really just do something with that. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know why my, my brain is like, Eh, it'll be fine. Just leave it there. Oh, I've walked past a dying plant more times than I would like to admit, that, and yeah. I didn't do anything about it. I think it it's a form of just like, I'll try to fix that later, or like, that's mm-hmm. a problem plant that's going to take a lot of my time, which I don't have right now, so I'll get to it later, and it just, gets, it just keeps getting pushed off mm-hmm. until eventually yeah. the problem becomes so big that throwing it away is the easiest solution and then it's not any time of your day you're just taking it and throwing it in the trash Mm -hmm. um but i was gonna say i liked your i liked how you said that you have a space for everything in in your home like for every plant like every every plant has a place and Mm -hmm. i 
read somewhere or watched a documentary it's in the back of my brain but like people that teach people about overspending on like you know consumerism like stuff for your house or clothes shopping addictions Mm -hmm. like every time you purchase a new clothing item you should get rid of an old clothing item that's taking up space so that like everything has a space so like now every time I go out and buy like new bras underwear socks like I'm always getting rid of my old ones regardless if they're still usable or not because like I don't have space for anything else you know yeah and I think that that's a really good habit and it's a way of just kind of eliminating the amount you spend on on things so that's great that like you have a spot for everything yeah and you know I've I saw somebody Christine work hard plant hard I don't know if she still posts on her Instagram but she had a one in one out rule so she'd bring in a Mm -hmm. plant she had to get rid of one because she had she kept her collection at about a hundred And for so long, I was like, that's ridiculous. Why would you ever do that? Why would you ever limit yourself like that? But now I get it because it's like we have a personal capacity of how much we can take care of. And also, I think it's important with any online community to recognize that YouTubers and like, quote unquote, influencers in a space are like a caricature of what the average person is because think about it like how many people watch our videos but all those people don't have like 400 plants well not that we have 400 plants each but you know what i mean like yeah i i said in a video recently like i don't want anyone to feel pressure to have a collection like mine just because i do this is like aspirational and this is my full-time job so right I don't want anybody to see that and compare their collection and think that they need to get to this level in order to be like a validated plant person. Uh, Mm -hmm. Same thing with like home decorators. Like my home does not look like an Instagram decorator, but like I sometimes compare myself and I'm like, well, how come I can't do that? Or I don't have this new beautiful bedding every month, but that's not real. Yeah. It's not realistic. Yeah. Yeah. There's like two big moments that usually stick out for me as far as like when I was like, I need to downsize. And one isn't a specific moment in time, but every time pests show their ugly face. Oh, yeah. Literally, because I do hold on to plants for longer than I should, even if I just have zero care for them anymore, because there's quite a few plants that I'm just like, I don't really care about you, but I'm still taking care of you. Mm -hmm. Um, But if pests enter the picture... Mm-hmm. Yeet. I'm like not like th- my brain Yeet. is like get rid of it and it doesn't mm-hmm. even like phase me. Yeah. So pest outbreaks were like a huge one for me. And then moving to Arizona for me personally, I think I said this on my Instagram story yesterday too, was just like a big eye opener because I am not the type of plant parent that wants to fill humidifiers and if you are that's mm-hmm. fine. Like I'm it's a good thing to do. I just never want to do it. Yeah. Cuz I'm lazy. And that's how Hoyas kind of became the front runner for me is because like they were the perfect plant for the amount of time I and effort I was willing to spend on mm-hmm. plant care. For, and and they, they're happy with me. Like they're just like, yeah, this is we'll take this and we're happy. But like the tropicals and all that stuff, because I had a myriad of different species of plants, so they did not they did yeah. not appreciate that attitude. Mm, yeah. But even though I killed a ton of plants through my time, like, and I still get overwhelmed right now. I'm sure we all do. Like when it's watering time or before I'm going on a trip and I need to water everything, I am kind of a wreck. Like I'm not mm-hmm. a nice person to be around because I'm stressed about the plants. But uh, I forgot where I was going with that. But I feel a lot better now, like that I've gotten rid of things and I just have ones that I like. I mean, I still have ones that I don't really care about, but the ones that... <laughs> my plant parent skills align with you know Mm -hmm. yeah well that's a good point too that you make like how you said um you got to a point where you found yourself knowing like the amount of time you want to spend on your plants Mm -hmm. and that's what you based your collection around i think that's a good thing to keep in your mind if you're a new plant collector and you're going plant shopping whether it be online or in a store keep that in mind like how much time do i actually have to give to these 10 plants that are in my shopping cart you know am i going to be able to care for them when they're triple the size they are now um, that's a really good thing just to keep in the back of your head, yeah. you know? Yeah, definitely. 
Because I think that that becomes an overwhelming thing. I think that, you know, you're watching people on YouTube and you're watching them care for their plants and it it just seems like this wholesome thing. And it is like it, it is therapeutic for most of us. That's why we all got house plants in, to begin with. But then when you, you know, reach a certain amount of house plants where you just don't have time for it, it can easily become overwhelming, anxiety, mm-hmm. it, like, and it could send you in a spiral and do the opposite of what you wanted them to do in the first place. <laughs> I think we've yeah. all been there. Yes. Yeah, especially if you deal with like anxiety and depression or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely have weeks where I don't want to take care of my plants. And if I had more needy plants, uh, I wouldn't have them anymore. Like they would be gone because mm-hmm. I've tailored my collection to be one that is doesn't need me every week like i can go at least two weeks without watering them they'll look really bad but they're not gonna die but Mm -hmm. yeah i just that's a big reason why i won't get like calathea or ferns or anything like that because i don't want i don't care about watering my plants that often okay my bird's nest fern is thriving (laughs) yeah she's beautiful and she has been quite neglected over the past couple of months i will tell you but so maybe maybe reconsider getting a bird's nest fern. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> good for that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah. yeah, no, I hear you. That's that's one of the main reasons I don't have those plants either. Yeah. Especially Calathea. I mean, it's a double-edged sword because you kind of a lot of us found house plants to help with our mental health. Yeah. And then yeah. after all of this overconsumption and too many plants and clutter the the plants are kind of detrimental to our mental health Mm -hmm. and it's it's tough to go by but if you're a person who's like you know not wanting to do plant care and you're feeling guilty like i just feel like i I want to tell you that you should just have a little grace with yourself Mm -hmm. be nice to yourself because maybe you got into a position where uh plant care seems very overwhelming but that's not always going to be the case. Like if you're not doing your chores, then some of them are going to die, but that's okay. Cause then the ones that didn't die are the ones that like are going to match with mm-hmm. your effort. And then yeah. you'll know where you stand, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And like house plants are different than collecting like state spoons. Like you have to maintain it. <laughs> you can't just put it on a shelf yeah. and be done with it. Like, yeah. It's different than other types of collecting and it's it's active collection collection. So you have to be more thoughtful about what you're buying. I think it might be a subconscious thing that I did, though, but I started like I watch very minimal YouTube these days and a couple of plant channels that I do watch have like downsized their collection a bit. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like a mixture of plants and other things you know like your channel becca and like just Mm -hmm. a couple other ones so i think like i don't know i've just i guess we've come to a point in our collecting over the past what has it been three years now four years ish four four Four. wow wow yeah wow time flies guys Mm -hmm. Jeez. yeah we're in season five holy moly anyway i think we've come to like a point in our houseplant collecting where we're just we can like see what's realistic and what's not and that's what I choose to watch on Instagram that's what I choose to watch on YouTube Mm -hmm. and I'm just you know I don't know dialing it back a little bit I guess (laughs) yeah yeah I I think who you whose content you choose to consume is really important for how your collection is going to go too because it's kind of like that thing that you tell kids like you're you're the sum of like the your three closest friends or something like that like yeah i feel like your habits are going to be just naturally similar to people that you watch because it's hard not to just Mm -hmm. i don't know i mean that's how i am so when i was watching people on youtube who were constantly unboxing plants um and we would never really see what happened afterwards I was wanting to do that too. And um, Mm -hmm. as a creator, I understand the draw to making those because as Adam said, those videos always perform super well. But it's just not realistic for the average person to be consuming that many plants. Um, So focusing on creators who like are loving on their collection as it currently is, like 
doing plant chores, showing their collection and doing stuff like that, like not so much like making content about buying things. That really helped me personally to like shift my mindset out of that Um, because I wasn't thinking about it as much anymore. I wasn't watching it. I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, I have a plan to do a video in the fall when I bring all my plants inside because I have like maybe 20 cactus out there and it'll just be like a where am I at like where's my plant collection at after collecting for this many years because it's an eye-opener because I was talking to Adam Mm -hmm. before we started recording like I didn't realize how small my collection has gotten like I'm under 100 plants now Mm -hmm. and that still sounds like a lot but a lot of them are smaller plants you know and I just think it's crazy that I've downsized that much, which is not a bad thing, you know? Yeah. Under 100 is ideal, honestly. Yeah. I don't know how people do it with like 300 plants. Like, I don't know how they do it. If that's not their full-time thing, like how... I don't understand. Watering day must be hell. Like, not that you're watering every plant every single... At the same time, but still. I used to watch a lot of Summer Rain Oaks, and she's just... She's bae, you know? Love her so much. (laughs) Still do to this day. Um, And her house was filled. I mean, over 500 plants. Yeah. But, like, her videos had a different feel to them. It was more like not a, you got to do this, you got to do that. This is what she... It was more of an informative channel, but also, you know, I remember a video of hers where she just said, like, yeah, all these plants have mealybugs, and you just got to embrace it and it's Mm. just like you're gonna when you have this many plants you're gonna have pests yeah you know you're gonna have outbreaks of certain things and you're gonna have plants that die and i don't know it was just this vibe that was like yeah like if this is what you're gonna do like if you are gonna be an avid collector and you are gonna have this many plants Mm -hmm. you have to embrace the bad that's gonna come with it and not let it you know get i don't know the best of you or not let it take up as much time as as you think it should or whatever. Yeah. I really like the one in one out rule. If you're at a point where you're, you know, stressed or overwhelmed, but you Mm -hmm. still like have plants you want to buy one in one out. Um, But yeah, let us know in the comments on today's post, like listeners, what you do when you're feeling overwhelmed, because I know this isn't just an isolated feeling, like even between us three, like this is, I feel like everyone has, has or is, gone gone through this going through this Mm -hmm. yeah um sure and we're all here to help each other so yeah let let us know in the comments like some things that you do to like maintain your collection size to not over consume to uh i guess just maintain a healthy relationship with you and your plants Mm -hmm. in your in your life you know um but let us know you can find us on instagram at potted together and individually we are sorry i feel like i just like went into the outro without even like we're just <laughs> hey, we got a five I got minute a cut off here. time so yeah. i'm just going <laughs> um you can find us individually becca is de La plants on instagram nicole is my clean leaves and i am not dude so go check us out over there we appreciate you guys hanging out with us um oh we also have a patreon if you want to hear extra chatty episodes each month you can do that over on patreon thank you guys for listening thank you for hanging out with us and we will talk to you next week bye Bye. Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch, full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. From their innovative ceramic materials to sexy automatic divers, from ultra-thin dress watches to solar-powered statement pieces and everything in between, movement is making sure you're the good gifter this year for your family, your friends, or for yourself. And now you can take advantage of 30 to 50% off Movement's California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories to get them a gift they'll never forget. With fast free shipping and returns and amazing bang for your buck, Movement makes for a relaxed shopping experience. And with one-size-fits-all watches, it's an easy, elegant gifting experience too. 
Shop 30 to 50% off now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.